This is from Ephesians 4, verse 3, that the calling on us is not to create racial harmony or ethnic harmony. It's to preserve it. That this is quite the weight lifted. Well, this is, it's not ours to create it. God already did in Christ. Here's where I see it. Ephesians 4. I'll, I'll read the, the lead in here. Ephesians 4, verse 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love in order to create ethnic harmony in the church. No, 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 no. Eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace because there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Do you hear? I added a four. I did a little arcing there. I added a four. (laughs) Eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace because there's one body, one spirit, uh, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father over all and through all. Preserve it, don't wreck it. That, That is such a load lifter. Enjoy it. And now looking outward from the people of God, from the church, Christ calls us as as God sent Christ to purchase people for himself from every tribe and tongue. So Christ sends us out with the great commission to make disciples of all nations. So now we we, we go outward and we make disciples of, of all nations, the great commission, Matthew 28. And Christ calls us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And that racially loaded parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 is undeniable in its pushing us to love across racial and ethnic lines in our neighbor love. Go and do likewise. So, Samaritan love Jews. Jews love Samaritans and every other ethnic flavor crossing you can imagine. So that, that's just my, de- develop a, a biblical understanding of, of how ethnicity and race has, has been there from the beginning and how it plays out and, and how it looks in, in the end when, when we gather around the throne as the one people of God and in, enjoy God forever and ever in his presence. People from every tongue and tribe. Just get that in your head and and it shapes how you see things and how you see people and how you value people. How you, how you love people. That's number one. That's number one. Develop a biblical view and teach it. Number two, get a conviction. Get a conviction. It, it, you know, it's one thing to know the biblical truth. It's another thing to have it grip your heart and, and have it shape how you see the world. You know, do you have a conviction about racial discrimination in the world? And do you have a conviction about harmony, how it ought to be in the church? Do you have a sense of, of um, because of the gospel, that God is glorified in a certain way on this earth and he intends to be glorified in a certain way? They're, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, that, that, that when things are out of line, it's out of line, and it, the, thing, the things ought to be a certain way. I'm just on get a conviction. Don't let it, the biblical worldview and the teaching land on you flat, but kind of like the, the parable of the, 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 the building on, on sand. You know, what are you gonna do with this biblical teaching and, and put it into play, put it into action? Out of your embrace for the first commandment, do you have a conviction for the second commandment? So that's what I'm trying to say. Get a conviction. 
the, the Bible has this massive teaching about God and, how, and about us and how it relates to ethnicity. And that relates to how things ought to be in this world. And, and I want to see it be the way God has intended it to be. That's, that's, that's point number two. Don't let it be merely intellectual. Get, get it down here into the convictional. Number three, read history and current events. First uh, Chronicles 12, uh, 32. The men of Issachar understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Uh, that's one text I thought of. The other text I thought of is, you know, if you're gonna walk into Athens like the Apostle Paul and, and preach the gospel as he does to those particular Athenians, referencing their worship and knowing the, the history and the, and the cultural uh, situation, you're going to have to read history and you're going to have to be aware of what's going on in, in the town, in the city, in the world. You're going to have to know. If you're going to speak the gospel in a way that relates to reality at the present time. You know, until recently, I had the sense that that I was getting the sense from people under 30 that that, that generation was done with racism. And I'm telling you, uh, I mean, done, you're done with racism when you're done with sin. You know, that, that's what's when it's going to happen. So let's open our eyes and, uh, you know, I say read history and current events. There is not a day that goes by when you won't find uh, uh, racial sin, ethnic sin written up in the news. There is not a day that goes by um, I'm afraid to say that that's true locally, but it might well be. The majority of days, you can open the, the paper that you don't open anymore. Open the iPad, and, uh, and, and just, so, so what I'm trying to say is pay attention. When racial and ethnic stuff is in the news, note it. Hey, that's racial and ethnic stuff. I mean, so just kind of breezing over it. Hmm, how does that relate to me and the church and, and how, how we live in this city and how we live in this world. What, what does the church have to say about that? So that's, that's the current events piece in history. You know, history, my goodness. The history of the human race is just terrible with racial sins. I mean, pick a, pick a century. It's just everywhere. Um, here's, here's a quote from Don Carson, just a little brief summary of racism all over humanity. Quite apart from the black and white variety engendered in the West by the tragic history of slavery, racism surfaces all over the world. Most Chinese parents would rather not want their daughter, for instance, to marry a European-American lad. Most Japanese think that Koreans are a step down. The list is endless. Add the tribal conflicts in Africa, of which the genocide in Rwanda is merely a notorious recent example. Add the myth of Aryan supremacy that demanded not only uh, Lebensraum, uh, the taking of territory from other nations uh, precipitating World War II, but issued in the Holocaust. Add the slaughter of a million and a half Armenians not to be confused with Armenians, Armenians in the beginning of the 20th century add the Russian slaughter of Ukrainians and widespread non-Russian Slavic distrust of Russians, add the horrors of apartheid in South Africa, now abolished in law but a long way from being totally overcome, add the treatment of aboriginals by Australian Caucasians, add the treatment of Indians in the Americas, North, Central, and South by Canadians, Americans, and Brazilians, and Hispanic countries. The list is endless. You get the picture. This is not, a, it's not merely an American Thing in the last few hundred years. This is a human problem. Read history and uh, get to know stories. I've been reading some slave narratives. I found them very interesting, especially when you can find Christians who are in slavery and how they hope in God and their suffering. Uh, Chuck, I think, is going to use some of those in the, in the upcoming uh, spirituals conference or concert uh, next this coming Sunday night. So that, you get the point. Read history and current events and just get some of the history in your mind and get some of the stories in your mind. Number four, 
I want to say two things. I'll just say it the biblical way, Romans 12, 9. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Yeah, be appalled and be happy. <laughs> you know, just be appalled when you see it wrong and be happy when you see it right. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Abhor is this vehement aversion. Be horrified at evil. You know, sometimes we get so accustomed to evil, not just in this category, but any evil. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just another dismembering murder. You know, it doesn't even kind of... Instead of going, oh, that, that's horrible. So I, I take the, the word from Romans 12, 9 is is hate what is evil. You know, let it get to you. Let it bother you. And then cling to what is good. And, you know, we see what is good in, in the context of racism and ethnic um, prejudice. Hate it when you see it and celebrate it when you, when you see uh, people loving across ethnic and racial lines. Um, you know, one of the things that came up in our journey here at, at Bethlehem as a, as a church was that, um, is that we had a group of people and we were thinking and talking about how do we help Bethlehem move forward. And one of, the, one of the practical suggestions was, you know, when we pray a list of sins on Sunday morning, Lord, forgive us for our hatred, forgive us for our selfishness, forgive us for our idolatry. How about we have a mind to add, forgive us for our ethnic discrimination for our races. Can we, can we add that to our, to our list of awarenesses? You know, it feeds our corporate awareness, feeds our self-awareness. So number four, uh, hate, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, uh, or be appalled and be happy. Number four. And uh, number five, develop an honest self-assessment. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. See if there's any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. You know, th th that's, a, that's a prayer. <laughs> that's a prayer. Lord, show me my ugliness. It's kind of like what happens when you get married. You know, like you, you get married, you kind of think you're a pretty good guy, and then, then by relationship with your wife, God shows you that you're really not a pretty good guy. <laughs> you're, you're a sinner. Uh, so this is a prayer to say, Lord, show me, show me my sins in this area. I can give you a couple of examples. Uh, I remember we were, we were at the table uh, with uh, working this racial harmony task force, and we're working on how to, how to help Bethlehem move forward in, in uh, ethnic harmony. And I caught myself checking out of when the, this Asian man on the team spoke. So he's talking, putting his ideas in and what, what we ought to do at Bethlehem. And, I don't know, accent or what? I'm just going, la, I'm la, 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 la. You know, I'm just somewhere else when he's talking. And I caught myself. And I said it. I said, you know, I was not paying attention when you were talking. And I think it's because of the accent. It took a little more work. It wasn't impossible. I'm sorry, you know, I mean, just, it was a good moment in the journey because that's what the journey's made up of, like awareness and confession and forgiveness and he didn't even notice, you know. I, I, the only way he would know is if I told him. Here's another one. Um, being mixed race, I, I have, I've had the privilege of going, I think of it as going into everybody's locker room. It's not everybody's locker room. Going into the white locker room and going into the black locker room. And so, so there's, there's black talk when they think no whites are around. And then there's white talk when they think there's no blacks around. And just let me, let me tell you <laughs> that, uh, that there's sin everywhere, all right? <laughs> you know, there is sin everywhere. And we don't need to prove it. We all know it. But, but in, in the back room talk, it's... It's there, and, and I think what troubles me is there's no blush in the back room when it's just the mono-ethnic conversation or the mono-ethnic conversation. So all I'm trying to say, develop an honest self-assessment of your own heart 
and your own part in racial sin or ethnic discrimination. Number six, love one another. Love, be compassionate, build relationships. Uh, you know, don't, don't think that your ethnic harmony score rises very high if all you have are the biblical teachings and the conviction and the, the sense of aversion to when you see the sin and, 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 and even an awareness of your own sinfulness. I mean, it's got to break out in love. <laughs> it's got to you know, like it's, it's get out of the, you know, got to get, get out of the library <laughs> and, and into life, <laughs> get it into life. Uh, love one another as I have loved you. Um, be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Live a life of love as dearly loved children, just as God in Christ loved us. May we so live. I just, I just so want us to be a people who, who live out the love of God in our relationships with other people in general and across racial and ethnic lines in particular. How about this one? Welcome one another as Christ welcomed you to the glory of God. Just these, these calls to love one another. And, and let me tell you that there are people here at Bethlehem who say, minorities, they say, you know, I'm in the small group with, with majority culture people, and, and that's good. But I notice that when they talk about going to the science museum together, I don't get invited. When they talk about going to the zoo with their kids, I don't get invited. When they have dinner, so I'm just saying that to just put it in your head, uh, to, to push into reality with, with loving relationships. And uh, it's in the relationships that empathy comes. You know, once you get near somebody else and hear their story, then you start seeing things from their perspective and having empathy for their life and experience. So, love one another. Number six, I gotta keep moving. Number seven, forgive. Uh, forgive, I already, I already read, uh, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. I mean, you, you can't make any progress in ethnic or racial harmony without forgiveness. You just can't. It's impo I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, that's a big piece of what it's about. Loving over sins, forbearing, forgiving, loving, 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 forgiving, forgiving, loving, loving. Um, you know, people will say and do dumb things. I have to say this both to minorities and to majority culture. People will say and do dumb things. You know, white men can't jump. Blacks love watermelon. Somalis do U-turns in the middle of the street right in front of me. Uh... Here's, here's, here's one I want to pick at. I don't even notice that my tongue is Asian, ethnically Chinese. Don't say that. It's not helpful. It's like saying, I don't even notice that my wife is a woman. <laughs> She's different from you, <laughs> from me. <laughs> and it's good. It's valuable. I mean, there's a sentiment I understand, but sentiment that I understand, but, but no, no, no. Enjoy that Mike is ethnically Chinese. Ask him questions about it. He might seem the same because in your relationship with him, he's not going there with you. He's gone there with me and fed me this terrible food at his house. And <laughs> It'll be a journey. It'll be a journey. But go there. That's my point. Go there. Okay, my point is forgive. Okay, here. So people say that to Mike, he's going to have to forgive him. He's going to say, well, thanks, but we're really not identical. We're not clones. We didn't fall out of the you know, machine. I mean, God made us this way and gave us his gifts to each other for the glory of his name and for the benefit of the church, building up of the church and maximum glorifying of his name and the spreading of the gospel to all nations. It's a good thing we have nations in the church to go to all nations. How convenient. 
Here's another forgive one. When we adopted our, our daughter, Catherine, uh, who's African-American, uh, back in 1995, I'm in the small town in Humboldt, Iowa. I mean, when I went there, I said, you know, I'm mixed race, is that okay? I'm, I'm black and Anglo. Um, and they said, yeah, we had a black guy in the church once. It's fine. Come on in. <laughs> That's great. So we, we, we adopted Catherine from Detroit, brought her in, and I, I, I remember to this day, so I can't remember if I was holding her or my wife was holding her, but we're holding her. She's, she's three months old, and this farmer who, who has lived his whole life in Humboldt, Iowa, came up to us, and, and he lifted her shirt, and he said, she is black all over. <laughs> you know, I could have taken offense, right? <laughs> but, you know, this, this man loved this little black baby. He actually paid for our family of, how many, five to fly to Detroit and get her together. You know, it's a dumb thing to say. You know, like, but forgiveness, that's what the gospel's for. And, uh, and he really did love her, and he held her a lot. So my point is, it's going to take forgiveness and forbearance, and that's just going to be routine. It's just going to be routine, not unlike marriage, but ethnic harmony in the church is going to take forgiveness and forbearance and, uh, and uh, you know, letting go of offenses, things that could be offenses not to camp out on any of those things. Number nine, do justice, Micah 6, 8. And here, this is the, the, the push. You know, our, our love will, when the occasion comes to act in love for the, the defense of another and we don't do it, there's something defective in our love. So I, I just want to push this piece. May, may God make us the kind of people who in our love for one another, in our love for our neighbor, that when the occasions come to do justice in the world, to speak for justice, that we do it. That we have courage and grace to speak up and say, I think that's wrong. We should fix that. That shouldn't happen that way. That's not biblical. That's not good. Here's what's good. Let's, let's. So that's what I mean by do justice. You know, I wonder what you think about when you think of, I mean, really, really when I say this, I really want you to think more complex, more uh, complexly, is that a word? Uh, <laughs> I want you to think uh, in a complex way about things like Black Lives Matter. I mean, what's, what's your knee-jerk response? Oh, those are the people that block the freeway and clog up the, the Mall of America. Or, or is it, now that's a people who have sensed an injustice and this rhythm of black male shootings just is, is causing this, this scream for justice among a people. Uh, you know, the, the best way to hear Black Lives Matter is to, to hear it like start seeing motorcycles. Do you know that? That's, that's no offense on cars. It's like, well, we, we just want to make sure we, we, we value the motorcycle guy and we don't overlook him. And, and that, that's the plea. That's the best way to hear it. Might not be what everybody means. But what, what I would say, the best way to hear it, all people are valuable, and, and there, there's a, a pattern with a people that is a problem, and none of us ought to be happy about that. So do justice. Number 10, rejoice in hope. We know the end of the story. We know the end of the story, where we gather around the throne, people of every tongue and tribe, and and God is in our midst and we will be his people and he will be our God and, and we will delight in him and enjoy him forever as one people of God purchased by Christ from every tribe and tongue. We know the end of the story. We don't have to bite our nails like, is this ever gonna happen? 
No, no, no. I mean, around here, I've had to speak a lot of hope into, into people who get frustrated in the journey. And uh, it's a hopeful journey. The end is settled. And lastly, pray. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray. You've got to be a praying people if we're going to pursue this. Let me pray right now. Father in heaven, thanks for the time together. And I pray for your blessing on the students of Bethlehem College and Seminary. I pray for your blessing on Bethlehem Baptist Church as we aim to glorify you here in this city and here in this world. May you who give endurance and encouragement give us a spirit of unity among ourselves as we follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and one mind we may follow, we may glorify you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.